Here we go, rookie all-star time again, and this is 1968 with the 1969 cards. And one of the weird ones of this one is out of the 10 players, Topps only predicted three of them and put them on the multiplayer rookie cards. All the rest of them were not, yet they made the rookie all-star team. So usually Topps is a little better on their prognostications, not then. So let's start it off in 68, and the right-handed pitcher is Stan Bonson of the Yankees. Bonson was the American League Rookie of the Year going 17-12, and 2.05. He, uh, in 72, would win 21 for the White Sox, and he would lose 21 for the White Sox the next year in 73. Overall, 146 and 149, Yankees, White Sox, Athletics, Expos, Angels, Phillies, 66-82. So Bonson is the right-handed pitcher. The left-handed pitcher, Jerry Koosman of the Mets. Uh, that's quite a lot of wins on the 68 Mets rookie card with he and Nolan Ryan on there together. Koosman in 68 went 19 and 12, 2.08, seven shutouts, 178 strikeouts, and uh, he went 222, 209 in his career, 3.36, twice a 20-game winner, struck out 2,500 batters. He won both of his starts in the 1969 World Series, Mets over the Orioles, including the final game. Um, 2009, he served six months for, in jail for tax evasion. Uh, so I don't know how what that was all about. But a great career for Koosman. Um, almost Hall of Fame stats. There's guys in the Hall of Fame with fewer wins than he's got. But uh, one of the Mets' all-time greats, no doubt. So Jerry Koosman, a left-handed pitcher. Behind the plate, a Hall of Famer, Johnny Bench. Bench, uh, 67-83, all with the Reds, a 14-time All-Star, two-time National League Most Valuable Player, 70 and 72, 1968 National League Rookie of the Year, overall, two, uh, no, he had 275, 15 homers, 82 RBIs. He caught 154 of the 162 games of the Reds. Lifetime, 267, 389 homers, 1,300 RBIs, two-time world champion, 10 gold gloves, two-time home run leader, three-time RBI leader. Other than that, he was mediocre. Just a fantastic player, one of the all-time great catchers in baseball history, Johnny Bench. Now we go to the opposite end of the spectrum, Gary Holman. Only card, local Southern California guy, um... I don't know. Uh, something weird with, with Holman. He, in 1968, played 75 games, hit 294, seven RBIs, and he makes the rookie all star team as the first baseman. And uh, he played 33 games at first. He played 21 games in the outfield. He also pinch hit and pinch ran, uh, had 30 hits, and struck out 22 times. So, but this is this is, he, he's the one that made it. Overall, he hit 259, no homers, nine RBIs in only two years, um, and hit 161. So, what you have is the 294 rookie year, and then and in 68, not so good, or in 69, not so good. He quit after 1969 when he'd been sent back down. I remember my dad reading about it in the paper, and he didn't like that kind of. What do you mean he's kick? This young man can play major league baseball. He's going to walk away. Arr, you know, uh, he just didn't understand. But Holman never did play again. That was it. He was done. So this is his only card, and uh, just up the two years, and uh, decided to quit. He uh, didn't like that they had sent him back down. I remember at the time, and that was it. Now at second base, we have controversy. Oh yes, we do. Because almost every list you will see will tell you this is the second baseman, Ken Boswell. Or is it Dave Nelson? Something's off here. Yeah, it is. Uh, one thing Tops like to do is mention on the back of cards that such and such made the rookie all-star team, you know, sometime in his career, sometimes on, on many future cards they're on. You look at every Ken Boswell card there ever is, not one of them says he made the rookie all-star team. If you check the backs of those 2009 uh, 50th anniversary Topps rookie all-star team cards and look under who made it at second base for 1968, it'll say Dave Nelson. 
My contention is people have always put him on the list because the trophy. I think the trophy's a mistake. I don't think he he was ever on the rookie All Star team. I think it was it's Dave Nelson. There's no other mention other than the picture of this trophy. There's nothing else that says Ken Boswell made the rookie All Star team. It's just the trophy on the card. So if somebody knows something, comment below, will you please, and tell me because tops list Nelson is the second baseman, um, and uh, his card. Uh, does this one do it? This one may not mention it, but. Uh, I'm trying to read over the camera, not through it. Blah, blah, blah. No, it doesn't. But one of his future, at least one of his subsequent cards, does say was the rookie All-Star team second baseman in 69. And, of course, Topps has printed that themselves on those uh, retro cards, those uh, anniversary cards. Boswell, nothing. Nothing about it at all on any card. Just the picture of the trophy. So my uh, contention is that uh, Nelson was the second baseman on the 68 rookie All-Star team really fast guy from LA and coached for a lot of years after that. Third base, we have another Hall of Famer, but not for his playing career, for his managerial career. It's Bobby Cox. This is his only major league card. He is on at least one minor league card I know of with the Omaha Dodgers. Um, he was stuck in the Dodgers system till the Yankees got him. And uh, Mike Ferraro was a sensation in spring training in 1968 at third base as a rookie for the Yankees. He's on a high number rookie card. And uh, basically he took over. Charlie Smith got hurt. He's also a high number. So Smith is out. So Ferraro takes the job in opening day, but he couldn't hit. He just, he was just abysmal. He, you know what? I don't know what his numbers were. It was like 130 or something. They sent him back to AAA and they call up veteran AAA player Bobby Cox, and he took over third base and stayed there the rest of the year and made the rookie all-star team. He only hit 225 uh, for his two years, 229 in 68, seven homers, 41 RBIs. And then he was here in 69, and that was it. Shortly after that, he went into managing in the minors and, of course, then uh, ended up in the majors. So just two years as a major league player for Bobby Cox, then, of course, a manager later on. Uh, he's also on a popular 1967 Venezuelan Winter League card, which I don't have. But uh, there's Bobby Cox. He's the third baseman. They thought it was going to be, nope, there we go with that. They thought it was going to be Mike Ferraro and Kuzman goes down. But uh, Cox ended up getting called up after Ferraro struggled at the plate. And the rest is history, as they say. So he made the rookie all-star team, came back in 69, ended up back in the minors, then went into managing. Shortstop. Hector Torres of the Astros. Now, Torres's father, Epitacio, is a uh, Mexican Hall of Famer, an all-time great center fielder. Hector, 68 to 77, only hit 216, 18 career home runs. Astros, Cubs, Expos, Astros, Padres, Blue Jays. But one of his 18 home runs was the first Grand Slam ever hit in Toronto Blue Jays history, and he hit it off of Ron Guidry of the Yankees, so go figure. Um, in 68, he played 128 games, hit 223, one homer, 24 RBIs. He, you know, he's a fielder. He was a utility infielder. Uh, he got his chance because Joe Morgan got hurt and missed most of 68, so they moved Dennis Mankey over to second base for the year and called up Torres to play shortstop. And, of course, Morgan came back in 69. Menke shifted back to shortstop. And Torres ended up getting traded uh, sooner or later. But, anyways, Hector, he was in baseball a long time. Managed in Mexico after he was done here. I think he still played in the Mexican League, too. And then he's managed down there for years. And, like I said, his father, a Hall of Famer in the Mexican League. We go to the outfield. And we start with Bobby Bonds who uh, just, you know, the next Willie Mays. That's all anybody kept hearing, the next Willie Mays. Well, his career numbers are great. But all you hear about Bobby Bonds is it could have been better. And, of course, the problem ended up being alcohol, uh, um, amongst other things, I suppose. But alcohol is the, the, the thing I've heard credited. Lifetime, 268 with 332 home runs, 1,000 RBIs. He also struck out 1,700 times, had 1,800 and 
well, let's see the exact number, 1,757 strikeouts, 1,886 hits. And uh, in 68 as a rookie, 81 games, 254, 9 homers, 35 RBI, 16 stolen bases. His Major League debut was on TV from San Francisco back to Southern California and because uh, they were playing the Dodgers. And I remember Vin Scully mentioned, here's a young man from Riverside, California. And boom, Bonds hit a grand slam in his first Major League game. So I was really thrilled to get this card the next year. Oh, that's the young guy from Riverside. Well, you know, what happened was, is of course, it started to fade for Bobby Bonds. And once he started moving, he started moving. So 68 to 74, he's with the Giants. From 75 to 81, those seven seasons, he was Yankees to the Angels to the White Sox to the Rangers to the Indians to the Cardinals to the Cubs. And uh, he was a three-time All-Star, three gold gloves. But uh, the latter half of his career, not nearly as, as good as the start. So there's Bobby Bonds. By the way, the Giants had no multiplayer rookie card in 68, yet they had two players that made the rookie All-Star team. These guys could have been a, a 68 Giants rookie card, but no. Let's see if we can get that better. Dave Marshall from Long Beach and uh, Bobby Bonds from Riverside, both from Southern California. Marshall, 67 to 73, Giants, Mets, Padres, hit 246 with 16 homers. In 68, 264, a homer, 16 RBIs. I know he worked later for the, uh, I believe, the city of Long Beach at the Queen Mary in charge of something there. Um, tourism or events or something. But yeah, Dave Marshall, uh, not a power guy, obviously, just just uh, in the right place at the right time, made the rookie all-star team, and uh, a singles hitter, basically. But there we go. The Giants could have had those two guys on a rookie card. The final guy, the first uh, Senators player to appear on a card in their new red uniforms, Del Unser. Unser's dad, Al, had played 42 to 45, Tigers Reds, a catcher. So Dell was 68 to 82. Senators, Indians, Phillies, Mets, Expos, Phillies again. In 68 as a rookie with the Senators, 156 games right in the starting lineup. 230, one homer, 30 RBIs, 11 steals. A lifetime 258, 87 homers, was a great pinch hitter. 80 world champion Phillies. In the postseason in 1980 for the Phillies, he had 455. Well, 5 for 11, he had three doubles, three RBIs, had a great throwing arm. He uh, is one of only two guys to pinch hit home runs in three straight at bats, Lee Lacey being the other one. So there's Dell Unser, and that concludes the 1968 rookie All Star team. We'll see you on another one next time. Thanks. Bye.